the Sinatav Richard Harris Barham Portray Charmant, Portray de Monami, Dog Berry, and Vergers. Oh, where shall I bury my poor dog Trey, now his fleeting breath has passed away? Seventeen years, I can venture to say, have I seen him gamble, and frolic, and play, ever more happy, and frisky, and gay, as though every one of his months was May, and the whole of his life one long holiday now he's a lifeless lump of clay, oh! Where shall I bury my faithful tray? I am almost tempted to think it hard that it may not be there, in yon sunny churchyard, where the green willows wave o'er the peaceful grave, which holds all that once was honest and brave, kind, and courteous, and faithful, and true. Qualities, tray, that were found in you. But it may not be you sacred ground, by holiest feelings fenced around, may ne'er within its hallowed bound receive the dust of a soulless hound. I would not place him in yonder fane, where the midday sun through the storied paint throws on the pavement a crimson stain. Where the banners of chivalry heavily swing o'er the pinnacled tomb of the warrior king, with helmet and shield, and all that sort of thing. No. Come what may, my gentle tray shan't be an intruder on bluff Harry Tudor, or panoplied monarchs yet earlier and ruder, whom you see on their backs, in stone or in wax, though the sacristans now are forbidden to ex for what Mr. Hume calls a scandalous tax. While the chartists insist they've a right to go snacks. No. Trey's humble tomb would look but shabby mid the sculptured shrines of that gorgeous abbey. Besides, in the place they say there's not space to bury what wet nurses call a baby. Even Rory Ben Johnson, that famous white, I am told, is entered there bolt upright, in just such a posture, beneath his bust, as Trey used to sit in to beg for a crust. The epitaph, too, would scarcely do. For what could it say, but here lies Trey. A very good sort of a dog in his day? And satirical folks might be apt to imagine it meant as a quiz on the house of Plantagenet. No. No. The Abbey may do very well for a feudal knob or poetical swell. Crusaders, or poets, or knights of St. John, or knights of St. John's Wood, who last year went on to the castle of good Lord Eglinton. Count Fiddlefumkin, and Lord Fiddlefaddle, Sir Craven, Sir Gale, and Sir Campbell of Sadell, who, as Mr. Hook said, when he heard of the feat, was somehow knocked out of his family seat. The esquires of the body to my lord Tom Noddy, Sir Fairley, Sir Lamb, and the Knight of the Ram, the Knight of the Rose, and the Knight of the Dragon, who, save at the Flagon, and Prague in the Wagon, the newspapers tell us did little to brag on. And more, though the muse knows but little concerning him. Sir Hopkins, Sir Popkins, Sir Gage, and Sir Jerningham. All pro chevaliers, in friendly rivalry, who should best bring back the glory of chivalry. Pray be so good, for the sake of my song, to pronounce here the anti penultimate long. Or some hypercritic will certainly cry, the word chivalry is but a rhyme to the eye. And I own it as clear a fastidious ear will be, more or less, Always annoyed with you when you insert any rhyme that's not perfectly genuine. As to pleasing the A. Tis a single quote worth worthwhile to try, since Moore and Tom Campbell themselves admit spinach is perfectly antiphonetic to Greenwich. But stay. I say. Let me pause while I may this digression is leading me sadly astray from my object a grave for my poor dog Trey. I would not place him beneath thy walls, and proud o'ershadowing dome, St. Paul's, Though I've always considered Sir Christopher Wren, as an architect, one of the greatest of men, and, talking of epitaphs, much I admire his, circumspice, si monumentum requiris, which an erudite verger translated to me, if you ask for his monument, circumspice. No. I should not know where to place him there. I would not have him by Surly Johnson B. Or that queer-looking horse that is rolling on Ponson B. Or those ugly minxes, the sister sphinxes, mixed creatures, half lady, half lioness, ergo, Dinon says, the emblems of Leo and Virgo. On one of the backs of which singular jumble, Sir Ralph Abercrombie is going to tumble, with a thump which alone were enough to dispatch him, if that squatchman in front shouldn't happen to catch him. No. I'd not have him there, nor nearer the door, 
where the man and the angel have got Sir John Moore, Ampers and Lieutenant, 1 and GT, and are quietly letting him down through the floor, near Gillespie, the one who escaped, at Valour, alone from the row. Neither he, nor Lord Howe would like to be plagued with a little bow wow. No, Trey, we must yield, and go further afield. To lay you by Nelson we're down right of front re. We'll be off from the city, and look at the country. It shall not be there, in that sepulchred square, where folks are entered for the sake of the air, though, pay but the dues, they could hardly refuse to tray what they grant to thugs and Hindus, Turks, infidels, heretics, jumpers, and Jews, where the tombstones are placed in the very best taste, at the feet and the head of the elegant dead, and no one's received who's not buried in lead. For, there lie the bones of Deputy Jones, whom the widow's tears and the orphan's groans affected as much as they do the stones his executors laid on the deputy's bones. Little rest, poor knave. Would he have in his grave? Since spirits, tis plain, are sent back again, to roam round their bodies, the bad ones in pain, dragging after them sometimes a heavy jack chain. Whenever they met, alarmed by its groans, his ghost all night long would be barking at Jones's. Nor shall he be laid by that cross old maid, Miss Penelope Bird, of whom it is said all the dogs in the parish are always afraid. He must not be placed by one so straight-laced in her temper, her taste, and her morals, and waste. For, tis said, when she went up to heaven, and Saint Peter, who happened to meet her, came forward to greet her, she pursed up with scorn every vinegar feature, and bade him get out for a horrid male creature. So, the saint, after looking as if he could eat her, not knowing, perhaps, very well how to treat her, and not being willing, or able, to beat her, sent her back to her grave till her temper grew sweeter, with an epithet which I decline to repeat here. No, if Trey were entered by Penelope Bird, no dog would be ere so be whelp Danby cur single quotart. All the night long her cantankerous sprite would be running about in the pale moonlight chasing him round, and attempting to lick the ghost of poor Trey with the ghost of a stick. Stay. Let me see. Eh here it shall be at the root of this gnarled and time-worn tree, where Trey and I would often lie, and watch the light clouds as they floated by in the broad expanse of the clear blue sky, when the sun was bidding the world good be single quo twi And the plaintive nightingale, warbling nigh, poured forth her mournful melody, while the tender wood pigeon's cooing cry has made me say to myself, with a sigh, how nice you would eat with a steak and a pie. Eh, here it shall be. Far, far from the view of the noisy world and its maddening crew. Simple and few, tender and true the lines o'er his grave. They have, some of them, too, the advantage of being remarkably new.